Sunday on last Sunday I tell you we really had a wonderful time ourselves just celebrating the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ who died for all of us and by his blood that we are saved thank you Jesus and also we'd like to just send a shout out to Sister Cummins Sister Rose Cummins she done a wonderful job on last Sunday bringing the message and bringing the word to us on last week Great job, Sister Rose. All right, today we'd like to say that I'll be speaking this morning, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, in the book of Acts, and we'll give you the scripture in all in just a few minutes. Uh, but at this time, we'd like to just uh, give you a selection from a song from the Gospel Deliverers. Uh, it's a little local group. Uh, the song will be uh, sung by Reverend Jerry Moore. God bless you. We thank you and we'll be talking to you in just a few minutes uh, as we uh, start our service. God bless you. share my testimony with you. In 1980, my oldest sister had to go into the hospital for open heart surgery. And after she had had the surgery, she had some complications. On this particular day, as I was on my way to work, I stopped by the hospital to visit her. I found her, she was in a lot of pain. I felt so helpless that there was nothing that I could do. I hated to leave her, but I had to go on to work. We lost her on March the 15th, 1908. But as I went on to work that day, these are words that God placed in my heart. So if you have it, uh, we'd like for you to read with us 
Let me just give you a few seconds to get your body.
Peter's escape. Verse 5 says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season for the church unto God for him. When the church begins to pray, when all of God's people get together, things will happen if we just continuously pray and pray without ceasing. Don't give up just because things might look a little bad. Just continue to pray and ask God to help. You can't pray too much. You can't ask God the same question over and over and over too many times. Uh, we have to continuously pray for what we want, for what we need, and what we are expecting. In the book of James 5 and 16, the scripture says the effectual prayer of the perfect prayers of the righteous avail of much. We have to continuously pray to pray for what we want. In Matthew 16 and 18, the scripture says, And I say unto you, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Jesus' proclamation to Peter was the church would endure tribulation. Surely we're going to go through some troubled times. Surely we're going to have some ups and downs. Surely God, uh, Satan is going to attack, uh, attack the church. But I tell you, if we hold on through tribulation, God will make sure that everything will be all right. Regardless of what it might look like and what it might seem like, the church will come out victorious. Verse 6, the scripture says that when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and the keepers before the door. Kept, uh, and kept the prison, and they kept the prison. Listen, it's been proven down through Bible history that you cannot keep God's people down. If God be for you, who can be against you? It reminds me of the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, the three Hebrew boys uh, with Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel 3, 5 through 6, 21 through 24 is how Nebuchadnezzar tried to destroy these young men because they would not bow down to a golden image. I tell you, you if you believe in God, you don't have to try to believe in somebody else. You believe in the truth and the living God regardless of what everybody else is talking about. If other gods don't worry about it, just Live for God. And God will supply your every needs according to his riches and glory. They did not bow down when the trumpets began to blow. They did not worship uh, Nebuchadnezzar. But I tell you what, Nebuchadnezzar was bad and he was angry. And he decided that they would cast the three Hebrew boys into the fiery furnace. In verse 21, the scripture says in the book of Daniel 3, 21 through 24, the scripture says, then these men were bound in their coats. Listen, the devil will try to bind you up and he'll make sure you burn. He'll try to do everything to turn your confidence up, your love for Christ, your love for your family, your love for your friends. He'll do everything that he can to destroy everything that you believe in. He made it hot for the young men. Uh, and it tried to discourage them. And in and, and, and verse 24 of the scripture says, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. Why was he astonished? Because what he saw before, they were cast into the fiery furnace. First, they thought that they were going to be totally destroyed. But watch what happens. If God be for you, who can be against you? What happens? Is Delicanus looked into the fiery furnace and he rose up in haste and he spake and he said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men into the midst of the fire? And they answered and they said, It is true, King. There was only three that was cast into the fiery furnace. And listen to what happens here. So he answered and he said, Lo, I see. Four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they had no hurt. And from uh, and the form of the fourth was like the Son of God. Listen to me now. When Jesus is with you, 
He's with you through your storms. He's with you through your trials. People think it's all over for you. But I tell you what, if God is in the midst and you're walking with him, he will make sure that you come out unharmed. I remember the time that I was going through problems and troubles in my life. And it looked like there was no way I was going to be able to survive. But I thank God because of his love for me. He looked beyond all of my faults and he saw all of my needs. And he made sure that I come out of my troubles. He made sure I come out of all of my hurts and my pain unscathed. I thank God and I praise him because he is almighty God. He's able to do all things but fail. In the book of Acts, we're going down to uh, verse 7. And through uh, <clears throat> verse 7, listen to what the scripture says. And behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side. You know, sometimes we get we we, we tend to rest in our problems. We get to relax in our problems and we allow our problems to control us. But listen to what happened in the midst of Peter's storm. The scripture says that the angel came down. He didn't just touch Peter, but the scripture says he smote Peter. In other words, he hit Peter on the leg, on, the, on his side. And he said, arise, get up out of there, Peter. Saying, arise up quickly. And his chains fell off of his hands. No doubt those, prison, those uh, guards were sleeping pretty hard. Because the scripture says that Peter stood up and the chains fell off. Sometimes, I tell you what, sometimes we can feel so bound down. And we just don't know what we're going to be able to do. But when God steps in, amen. In verse 8, the scripture says, And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did, and he said unto him, Cast thy garments about thee, and follow me. If we just learn, church, how to follow him, God would make everything all right. I know some of us are, are just chained down on the inside. Our minds is confused. Our minds is messed up. We can't even see right. We can't even talk right. We can't live right. Our hearts have been broken. Everything seems to be going wrong in our homes, in our churches, on our jobs. And everywhere we go, our cars are breaking down. We've been laid off. We don't have any money. It just seems like there's nothing going right in our lives. But I tell you what, it's an inside job. If you allow God to come into your heart on the inside, all of those shackles will be broken. All of the chains will be loose. I, I thank God because he can come into your situation. He can meet you wherever you are in your situation and make everything all right because he is our peace in the midst of the storm. I thank God uh, because he's able to walk, help us to walk over those troubled waters. He's that bridge over troubled water. He's that, he's that peace in the midst of the storm. He's that light in that dark hour. He is that bright in that light, uh, shining star. He's the food uh, when I'm hungry. He's my peace uh, when I need somebody just to be able to lay my head on. He's everything. He's everything. He's everything to me. I thank God for all that he is to me. Psalm 37 and 25 says, I have been young and now I'm over yet. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. If we are walking in the peace of God, if God is our Savior, regardless of what we think we don't have, God is able to supply all of our needs. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's able to give you everything that you need if you just walk and trust in him. Most of all, if you continuously pray. You know, God is with us even when we think he's not with us. He's right there beside us if we just trust in him. But first of all, what we have to do is we have to know that we know that we know that the God that we are serving hears our every cry. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, the scripture says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shalt believe in thy heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
But first of all, we have to confess, people. We have to confess our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, with our minds. The Lord Jesus, and shall believe it in our hearts, not in our mind, but in our hearts, that he is Lord, he is Savior, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, it's with the heart that you believe unto righteousness. It's not with your mind, it's not with your feet. You can't get out there, get on a bicycle and ride out and give out uh, uh, invitations and all type of, uh, of messages and, th and think you working your way into heaven. It doesn't take that. It doesn't take all of the falling around, rolling around in the church. But what it does take, you have to believe in your heart, confess in your mouth, with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. And if you believe that, verse 10, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, the scripture says, And with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And once you are saved, you won't be afraid to be able to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you on today. And we pray that this sermon touch somebody's heart, somebody's soul before it's ever lasting too late. We just bless you and we thank you just to be safe during this uh, COVID-19 uh, virus that's going around. Please be safe. Can continue to pray and we give God the thanks and the prayer and in the praise. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Oh